Welcome to Finished Work International Ministries, a ministry that is on the cutting edge, changing lives around the world. As you let God in today and apply the word, expect a divine encounter and supernatural transformation. It is impossible for you to be defeated when you have the revelation of the will of God. It is impossible for situations to subdue you when you walk in understanding of what God is saying to you. Let the finished work of Jesus determine what you pray. When God is your source, you don't look back. You keep looking forward. You keep trusting. Him. God, I trust you. Here's Apostle Faith Man Obuena. Lord, we thank you because you're a mighty father. We'll give you praise because your word is true. Father, we thank you right now. We'll give you praise right now. We, we worship you right now. There is no one like you, Jesus. We thank you for being a merciful Father, for being a glorious Father. For being a mighty father, Lord, we thank you right now. Mandro in the name of Jesus, Amen. In Habakkuk chapter one, the book of Habakkuk, Habakkuk chapter one, from verse five. In the book of Habakkuk chapter one, verse five, he said, "Behold, ye among the hidden, and regard, and wonder." wondrously wonders uh, uh, wonders marvelously for i will walk a walk in your days which ye will not believe although it may be told you i will walk a walk in your days wonders <laughs> marvelously <laughs> a walk when God said he's going to do something, you better believe that. I will walk a walk in your days. So the prophetic word is, God has started a walk in you. You will live to see the manifestation of his goodness. Hallelujah. God has started a walk in you. You will live to see the manifestation of his goodness. And the work that God has started in you will exceed your expectation. The work that God has started in you will exceed your expectation. And this work God has started in you is not based on your performance. It is based on his love, his mercy, and kindness towards you. In this work God has started, you begin to notice an amazing strength. The strength to accomplish dreams that you thought was going to take you a long period of time. You thought it was going to take a long time. There is someone here. You thought it's going to take a long time for it to happen. But I can see this right now. It's already happening. It's already happening. It's already happening. He said, I will do a work that if you're told, you won't believe it. Why? Because it exceeded your expectation. I hear the Lord saying, I will not bring you into expectation. I will bring you into exceeded expectations. Wow. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Mandro sakatalababa. Run reseketoli blakhababa. Run reseketoli blakhababa. Run reseketoli blakhababa. 
I will not bring you into expectation. I will bring you into exceeded expectation. I will not bring you into expectation. I will bring you into exceeded expectation. Exceeded expectation. You never knew it was coming, but suddenly it showed up. You have had the testimonies of others, but yours is the next to be broadcasted. I am exceeding your expectation. I hear the Lord said, I will exceed your expectation concerning your children. <laughs> I will exceed your expectation concerning your children. This is the word of the Lord for someone right now. For a parents that have been believing God for the transformation of his children, hear ye the word of the Lord. I will exceed your expectation consigning the expectation you have about your children. The Lord said he will exceed your expectation. The, the leaves are growing again. The leaves are growing again. The branches are coming out. The branches are coming out. And what I saw in these branches that is coming out, I saw the hand of the Lord doing something you have struggled to do for the past three years. Something you have tried to handle for the past three years. You have, you have given all the counsel you know to give. You have shouted all you know how to shout. But I saw the Lord bringing out a branch, a branch of righteousness. In that life, a branch of righteousness. Rindo shakababa, rendre saka, koka alingo shakababa, mekorobo sandre seketolibla kababa, randre seketolika bababa, rondro seketolibla korobo, mandia and lebo sande bababa. Makolobo sandala baba, randre seketoli karaba sekoto baba, rindro seketoli blaka baba, randre seketoli prato seka baba, mandre seketoli baba baba, randre seketoli kaparando seka baba, randre seketoli kaparando seketo baba, mandre seketoli kaparando seketo li baba, mandre seketoli kaparando seketo li baba. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Mandro sakababa. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Mandre seka kalim rodobobo. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The spirit of depression is gone. The spirit of depression is gone. In the name of Jesus, Manto Kabalindra Sakababa, Randra Seketolibla Korobo Sakababa, Likarababa Borobo Sakababa, Rindro Seketolika to Lembre Desketolika Bababa, Randre Seketolibla Korobo Sakababa, Randra Seketolibra Korobo Bobo, Likorobo Bobo, in the name of Jesus, Nehum, the book of Nehum, chapter one, vex. Seven, Nehum chapter one verse seven. In Nehum chapter one verse seven, and it said, "The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble." Hmm, I like this. Nehum chapter one verse seven. It said, "The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble." There is someone here. You are facing some trouble, but the Lord is good. <laughs> a stronghold in the day of trouble. If there is a trouble, God will be a stronghold to the trouble. Hear ye the word of the Lord. I am a stronghold to your trouble. Hmm. I am a stronghold to any trouble that is before you, any trouble that is before you, I am a stronghold. He said, for the Lord is good, a stronghold in the dark trouble. 
And a stronghold suggests a resisting force, a force that cannot be penetrated. He said, I'm a stronghold. He's your stronghold against his trouble. So whatever that is going on right now, you have supernatural help. Let's pray in the spirit. Lindo shakala baba. Randre seketoli kababa. Randre seketoli bla kababa. Randro seketoli bla kababa. Rondro seketoli bla kababa. Randre seketoli bla korobobo. Mande shakata la baba. Randre seketoli bla kababa. Mandro seketo la baba. Randre seketoli bla kababa. Randre seketoli bla kababa. A stronghold in the day of trouble. If it's a trouble, God is a stronghold. Mango lobo sa kababa baba. Randre seketoli bla kababa baba. Rindro seketoli bla kababa. Rindro lobo seketoli bla kababa. Randre seketoli bla kababa baba. Randre seketoli bla kababa. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. I was reading a book yesterday by Gordon Lindsay. One of you may have heard about a man of God called Gordon Lindsay. Uh, he has gone home to be with the Lord. And I was reading a book he wrote on prayer yesterday. And he said, every day you expect to pray one violent prayer. <laughs> one violent prayer. And when he said that, that got my attention. Then he made a statement. He said that Christians who don't pray become victims to attacks. That victims who don't pray become victims to attacks. So he said, when you pray, you are ahead of deception, manipulation. You are always ahead. So one of the ways you get ahead of situations and circumstances is when you pray. You will be always be ahead of the problem if you're in the place of prayer. So these 20 days of prayer and, and healing, is it, God is doing the work in your prayer life as we're praying. Most of you, when this meeting is over, you're going to pray like never before. Because you have contacted something while we are praying. Then he said, if you pray, you'll be ahead. You will know when that guy wants to deceive you. You will know when that woman wants to deceive you. There is something about prayer that will cause you to be aware of your environment. That will cause you to be aware of situations. You will just know. See, as you pray, you come into knowing. Mm, I like that. If you're writing, write that down. If you're praying, you'll be coming into knowing. There is a knowing you come into as a result of prayer. There are things you begin to know. A lot of Christians just fall into traps, fall into attacks, fall into so many things. The reason is because most Christians are not in the place of prayer. Because in the place of prayer, you will know. You, you, you will know, and then you will begin to gain understanding of demonic activities. And sometimes there can be a demonic activity released at a believer, but because that believer was sensitive, it subdued that attack. But if the believer is not sensitive, that thing comes and sweep her up. And this is why you can't live a careless life. I'm telling you. You can, you can live a life of sin and open the door for the enemy. He's going to come in. Satan is going to come in. So when we pray, prayer cultures our body. One of the keys to living a life of holiness is when you begin to live a life of prayer. Because as you live a life of prayer, there are certain things you will not respond to. There are certain things you're not going to respond to because as you spend time in prayer, ungodly appetite begins to die. One of the ways you kill on godly appetite is when you start spending time with God. And, and sometimes if you're not careful, you can become negligent concerning the word of God and prayer. You can just say, well, I think I've prayed before. We just did a fast. We just did that. And then you don't know that you are in a battlefield. And because you're in a battlefield, all kinds of things are happening. Whether Christians believe it or not, there is a battle against them. 
There is a battle against them. We have victory already, but your common enemy is trying to sway you. Satan is always looking for a way to sway you. If it's not coming through you, he may try to come through your children. He may try to come through a spouse. He may come, try to come through a business partner. But as we pray, we control the atmosphere of our life. We control the atmosphere of situations. We control what is ahead of us that may not be consistent with the word of God. So as you pray, you take charge. One of the ways you take charge and take control is when you come from the place of prayer. Some people are battling with things they have no clue of the source of it. But as we pray, it will help us to root things out. So this morning we're going to pray. The prayer point is, Lord, cause me to be strategic in the place of prayer. Lord, cause me to be strategic in the place of prayer. Makula and the rebo se kababa. Cause me to be strategic in the place of prayer. Cause me to be a watchman who understand the, the, the skills of the spirit. Who understand the skills of the spirit. Cause me to be a watchman who understand the skills of the spirit. Cause me to be a watchman who understand the skills of the spirit. Makorobo shababa. Le korobobobo. Cause me to be a watchman who understand the skills of the spirit. Spirit. There are spiritual skills. Oh my God. I need to teach on that. I need to write that down. Spiritual skills. By the word of God, you become skillful concerning the things of the spirit. By the word of God, you become skillful by the, by the word of God, you become skillful. You become skillful. You, be, you, you become skillful. You become skillful concerning the things of the spirit. You ma 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 ma. You ma shaba ba. You ma shekoro ba 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 ba. Ma ma ba ba ba. Ma shekoro ba sheketo ba ba. Ma ba 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 ba. Wandere ba ba ba. Ah le koro ba ba. By the word of God, you become skillful. You become skillful concerning the things of the spirit. You, you, you know the scripture to use. You know the scripture to use in, in designing, in, in changing things. The word of God causes you to become skillful. Skillful in warfare. Skillful in dealing with things. The Bible said we are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. It said give no place to the devil. It's time to cultivate spiritual skills. It's time to cultivate spiritual skill. In 2 Timothy 2.15, uh, 2 Timothy 2.15, you know, when Paul was writing to Timothy, he says, study to show yourself approved. Now, if you want to be a successful engineer, you have to study for many years. If you want to be a successful medical doctor, you have to study for many years. If you want to be a successful businessman, you need to study. Now, I've noticed concerning the things of the spirit, most people don't want to study. Now, it is in study you develop spiritual skills. What do I mean by spiritual skills? The ability to know what to do at the right given time. Because you have the knowledge of the word of God. Because you have the knowledge of God's word, you know the scripture to use for this situation. There are a lot, a lot of believers that are not skillful consigning the things of the spirit. They are not skillful. That was why Paul prayed that your eyes of understanding will be enlightened, that you will know. Because when you're skillful concerning the things of the spirit, you'll be able to intercept every demonic activity. You can see. You can see when something is happening and then you're praying about it. You can hear when something is going wrong, going on in the realm of the spirit. Do you know that you can train yourself in the things of the spirit that you can hear when evil spirits are talking? You can hear when there is a conversation going on. You can train yourself. And the word of God to a point, you can hear conversation. You can hear things in the spirit. And this is why, you know, the spirit of God begins to show me some things of recent. He said, a lot of people want God to fix what he has already fixed. 
without knowing how to unfix it. There are things we have to learn how to unfix. There are things we have to we have to learn how to unlock. God likes the right word, unlock. God have already done it, but we have to learn how to unlock it. But you can only unlock it by revelation. So we're going to pray this morning. Lord, cause me to grow in revelation, knowledge, and in spiritual understanding. Cause me to grow in revelation knowledge. Cause me to lift up your voice and begin to pray. Cause me to grow. Cause me to grow in revelation knowledge. Cause me to grow in revelation knowledge and, and spiritual understanding. Man, Robert, and spiritual understanding. We need to grow in these areas. This is how to develop spiritual skill. As you grow in revelation knowledge, and, and spiritual understanding. You are supposed to see it before it comes in. You are not expected to be a victim of the situation. You are expected to see it in the spirit uh, and intercept it. You are expected to see it in the spirit uh, and stop it from coming closer. My sensitivity towards the things of the spirit is growing. Mm. My sensitivity towards the things of the spirit is growing. That is your confession this morning. My sensitivity towards the things of the spirit is growing. My understanding towards the reality of the realm of the spirit is growing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. My understanding towards the reality of the realm of the spirit is growing. My understanding towards the reality of the realm of the spirit Spirit is growing. My understanding towards the reality of the realm of the spirit is growing. Lekoro bo sakala baba mandolo bo mandolo bo mandele bo mandele bo mandele bo mandele bo mandele bo shekona la baba randele bo shekondo liba baba randele bo shekoto liba baba randele bo shakanda la baba randele bo shakanda liba gada randele bo shakanda liba gada mandele bo shekondo liba gada baba randele bo shekondo liba gada baba randele bo shekondo liba gada baba my understanding towards the things of the spirit is growing out my spiritual edge is sharpened out mando so kaba baba rande so keto libla kambaba rande so keto libla gada in the name of jesus do you know that you can know what wants to happen the next three months today do you know that you can know what is ahead of you a lot of people don't know why the Holy Spirit is in their life. One of the reasons why the Spirit of God is in your life is to show you things to come. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. <laughs> the Holy Ghost is in your life to show you things to come. Things to come. Every believer in the body of Christ has a prophetic dimension of their faith. But it's not every believer that is walking in the revelation of the prophetic dimension of their faith. I said every believer in the body of Christ has a prophetic dimension of their faith. But it's not every believer in the body of Christ that is walking on the knowledge of the prophetic dimension of their faith. I pray you get this statement. If you get it, happy are you. Every believer in the body of Christ, there is a prophetic dimension of your faith. That's what it means. There is an ability to know, to recognize, to understand. But it has to be developed. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He said, the Spirit will show you the things to come. Man, we, we, are, we are into something next morning. You are into something next morning. The Spirit will show you the things to come. That's what means you cannot be a fool to that man. You cannot be a fool to that woman. You cannot be a fool to that situation. The Spirit will show you. So how did she get into it without knowing about it? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Wow. The Spirit will show you the things to come. So if the Spirit is not showing, it's because there is no connection with the Spirit. Wow. Thank you, Holy Ghost. 
Somebody was praying and God is giving you answer right now. The spirit. When I look at someone, I know whether they are genuine or not. When, when people send me requests on Facebook, I know fake people. As I look at them, I know this one is not real. I just say delete. If suddenly I didn't recognize it and they come into my page, I still delete it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God. As I look at them, I can tell. When I look at people's picture, I know whether they are thieves or scam. I could tell. It doesn't matter the makeup they put on. It doesn't matter how they look. Let them wear designer suits. If I look at them, I know them. Because we don't know people by clothing. We know them by the spirit. The spirit will show you things to come. The spirit will show you things to come. This is a word for someone this morning. The spirit will show you things to come. The spirit, let this word come like a revelation to you, honey. The spirit will show you things to come. The spirit will show you things to come. I will say it until you get it. The spirit will show you things to come. You're not going to be a victim of the trap. Wow. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The spirit will show you things to come. You will not be a victim of the trap. The spirit will show you things to come because there are things to come. But by the spirit, you will know the spirit will show you things to come. This is why Jesus, you know, while we're reading the scripture and the Holy Ghost, thank you, Holy Spirit. Mm, thank you, Holy Spirit. I, I want to show you something. Can we go to John 14? Let's go to John 14. John chapter 14. Thank you, Holy Ghost. John 14. Thank you, Holy Ghost. John 14. And I, I, I like to read. Uh, wow, 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 wow. This this one of the best days of this meeting we're having. <laughs> this one of the best days. I'm telling you because I'm I'm getting some stuff coming from heaven. I'm getting in, in John 14. Watch this in John 14. Let, let's look at it from Vex from Vex 16. John 14 16. And our, I and I will pray the Father, and He will give you another Comforter. This, Jesus was telling them, I will pray the Father, and He will give you another Comforter. He will give you another comforter that he may that he may abide with you forever. Now listen to this. If he's with you, it means you cannot be deceived except you don't know how to relate with him. How many of you, someone have come to ask you for something and said, can you give me this thing? And you told them I don't have it. But someone else came and said, can you give me this? He said, let me work on it and see how I can get it across to you. Have anybody been there before? Someone came to ask you for something. They say, oh, oh, we are going through some financial difficulty right now. We are going through some things right now. And then someone else asks you, you're looking for a way to give it to him. You know what happened? Because of communication, because of honor, the Holy Ghost is inside of you. But if you don't know how to relate with him, he can show you things to come. Because even when he shows you, you can recognize it. Oh, my God. This is the reason why you have to be spiritually sensitive to be able to know when he's showing things to you. <laughs> when he's showing things to you, because there are things he's showing right now. Right now, he's showing things right now. He's showing, someone is in a battle. The only way you can win this battle is to accept the truth God has revealed to you. <laughs> Some battles are not to be fought. But by understanding, you know it's not a battle for you. You make a decision, this is not my battle. Because the Holy Ghost is not leading you into that. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is not leading you into that. So look at the scripture. It said, he will abide with you forever. So you have the Holy Ghost abiding with you for what? Forever. So every day I have a, you should have a cancer. You should have an understanding. And look at what it said here in verse 17. Even the spirit of truth. He's called the spirit of truth. So when people are lying to you or when someone is trying to take advantage of you, this spirit of truth will tell you they're lying. The Holy Ghost will tell you they're lying to you. This spirit of truth, because he is the spirit of truth, the only thing he accepts is truth. Mm. And anything outside of truth is not accepted by the spirit of truth. So he said here, yeah, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, 
because it seeth him not. You see, what is the problem? There are a lot of believers who are also here. They have the spirit of truth, but they don't see him because they're not in connection with him through fellowship, through the word, and through trust in the word of God. They are not in connection. They are not, they are not sensitive to his ways of doing things. There is the ways of the spirit. There is the ways of the spirit. Oh my God, thank you, Lord. This is good. There is the ways of the spirit. And if you are sensitive to the ways of the spirit, you cannot be a victim of deception or scam of any form. You just know. You will just know because the spirit is responsible for giving you revelation, for giving you prophetic insight into situations, for revealing the state of things. Oh my God, you need to hear this. The spirit is in you to reveal to you the state of things. You know, someone can be talking to me and why they're talking to me, then I could just see that said, I'm not sure of this person you're talking about. No, I said, I'm not sure of this person you're talking about. This person you're talking about, I'm not sure of him. But you see, sometimes people become victims because their flesh is dominating the voice of the spirit in their life. Their flesh is dominating. You see, you see, if your flesh dominates the voice of the spirit, then you're a victim. Then you can escape the deception. If your flesh dominates the voice of the spirit, only God can save you after that. <laughs> only, only God can save you. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> if your flesh dominates, when the Holy Ghost is saying, let go that man. Let go that human. Let go. Let go. He is not telling you to let go because he hates the person. He's telling you to let go because this person is going to mess up your life. And sometimes when he tells you to let go, it's for your benefit. He says, sometimes when God gives you an instruction, you think, oh, oh, does it mean you don't like him? Oh, does it mean you're against him? Oh, oh, I don't think you love him. Well, I don't think you love him. Now, you know what they do? They start avoiding you. <laughs> I've seen people avoided me because I told them the truth. They say, oh, of course, you don't understand. I say, okay, later we'll understand you. I'll be waiting for you at the turning point. I'll always be at the junction. I used to tell people in our church, I'll be waiting for you at the junction. I'm sitting here waiting for you. I've seen how the movie, I've seen how the movie is going to play out. I know everything that is going to happen. So when you give counsel, I'll just be sitting down. I'm bewitching. That's all I would do. What else do you want me to do as a pastor? I wonder, then people will tell you, God said, God said, God said, and you can look at it carefully with the eyes of the spirit and know that he's deceived or she's deceived. And you say, hey, honey, I don't think that. You say, no, you can't tell me that. The Lord said, five persons have spoken. I don't care many people who spoke. 20 people doesn't mean confirmation. <laughs> When we talk about confirmation, it's not, who, is, who is confirming it? Who is the person? Where did they came from? Who confirmed it? He said, this is not person to confirm it. This bro, I don't care who confirmed it. If it's not true, it's not true. <laughs> if it's not true, it's not true. It doesn't matter how many people who said, oh, this person said this. Oh, that was, it doesn't matter. Let hundred people, the, the, the scripture said, in the mouth of two witnesses, if you like, have hundred witnesses. Hundred witnesses that they didn't hear from God. <laughs> it's no witness. <laughs> It's no witness. And this is why the Holy Ghost is teaching us this morning on spiritual skills. I think we're going to do a series on spiritual skill. Then uh, you remind me. Please, let, let's, let's do a series on spiritual skill. We're, we're doing something right now on finances, but, but you guys should call me responsible to teach on spiritual skills. On spiritual skills that you, you could you, you could avoid some things. You can you can save your money. You can you can you can keep your money. You cannot you you can save resources. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. 
There are things you can say. Because when you have an understanding of how the realm of the spirit works, as you see it, the Holy Ghost is said, be careful. Wow. <laughs> He said, be careful. And when he said, be careful, be careful. You cannot have more faith than the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Your faith is only effective in the will of God. Don't forget that statement. Write it down. Your faith is only effective in the will of God. Your faith is only effective in the will of God. Your faith is only effective in the will of God. So what, what the will of God wants you to do in this season is to be sensitive. By the Spirit. You are so, when you don't understand things, you give a call to your spiritual leader. Say, I don't understand this one. What do you think about it? Then we can say, let's pray about it. Let, let's wait on God to know. Let, let's be sure that God is moving us that way. You can't be in a hurry and get it right. <laughs> You get it right when you listen to the Spirit. I was listening to Bob Knuckles yesterday. He said something that got my attention. He said, this generation is a restless generation. And this man has pastored for more than 52 years. He says, it's a restless generation. That people are not waiting to hear from God. People are not waiting to understand God. They're in a hurry. And when people are in a hurry, they make worse mistakes of their lives. So the Holy Ghost will be showing you things to do. I'd like you to lift up your hand and say this after me. Holy Spirit, you are my helper. I trust you for counsel for understanding, for inspiration, for wisdom, for right judgment of things and situation. Holy Spirit, open my eyes of understanding to see, to understand, and to judge. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. You can lift that. You can bring down your hands, you know. And the Spirit of God will begin to show you things to do, even in business, even in business, even in business. He is going to show you. He's going to show you. It, let's look at that scripture. And it said here, glory be to God, in John 14, verse 17, it said, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and ye shall and shall be in you, shall be in you, he shall be in you. And verse 18, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I will not leave you comfortless. He said, I will come to you. I will not leave you comfortless. He said, I will come to you. Concerning this matter, he will come to you. Holy Ghost, show me what to do. Holy Spirit, show me. You know, I told you this story one time. Some of my friends know it. A little son came back from school. And this incident happened about close to four years ago. Four years ago. Three to four years ago. And we didn't know where he kept his book. We have been looking for the book because he needed to submit the assignment. Well, the school used to be very disciplined. So we have been looking for the book. We have searched everywhere. We have lifted everything up. We have everywhere we are searching. We have, we have been walking for days now. We can't find the book, oh God. But the book is in the house. We have looked for everywhere. You know what I did? I said, Holy Spirit, please show me where it is. As I just opened my mouth and said, show me where it is, he said, look up. I looked up, look at the book. How many hours? Who have been searching. Please, may you not make that mistake we made that day. Talk to the Holy Ghost. Show me. Holy Spirit, show me. Don't always believe you, you know everything. Don't always assume that you, you have all the answer. 
Holy Spirit, show me. When you say, show me, sometimes it may not be instant. Sometimes it may be instant. And sometimes you begin to move your path to a different direction. A particular lady that comes to our local church, she said something about my, she said, uh, she didn't come to, with her car, she used to come with her car to church. And I said, where is your car? She said, I've been looking for the keys for over four, is it four to three days now? They couldn't find the keys. Then they have been looking, they have searched everywhere. They are looking for the key. I told her, the key is in your house. He said, no, pastor, no, 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 pastor, no, the key is not in the house. The key will look, will search everywhere. Honey, guests, where they find the key? When I told them, they got home, they find the key behind the fridge. You see, there are things you won't see with these eyes. You can only see it with these eyes when the Spirit revealed them for you to see them. So from today, I want you to understand that the Holy Ghost is your best partner, your best friend. Your best partner in business is the Holy Spirit. Your best partner in marriage is the Holy Spirit. He will tell you what to do. There are things you don't know. You don't you know. You don't know. You don't know. So from this day forward, I want you when, you, when you're driving, you're going to your office, you're brainstorming, it's the Holy Spirit I invite you to help me in this conversation. Holy Spirit, I invite you to take over this conversation. Holy Ghost, I invite you to reveal things to me. Holy Ghost, I invite you to show me the way out of this matter. Holy Spirit, show me what to do. Instruct me the way out of this. It is sometimes your brain doesn't know what to do. <laughs> Honey, let's tell ourselves the truth. Sometimes your mind doesn't know what to do. Sometimes the books you read doesn't can tell you what to do. He said, Holy Spirit, show me, show me, show me what to do about this. I don't want to assume. I don't just want to conclude. Show me. And sometimes he may tell you, be quiet. And you say, why should I be quiet? I need to say something. He knows why he told you to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> he knows why he told you to be quiet. Because in being quiet, you will start seeing. But when you're talking, you're distracted. That moment. So when he said, be quiet, just be quiet. As you're quiet, you said, look up. Wow! But if you're talking, when he said be quiet, you will see it. Because by, by talking, you're distracted already. By talking, you're distracted. But he said be quiet, be still, and know that I'm God. Be still and know that I am God. When he said be still and know, just allow him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. Wow. Glory to God. Amazing things are happening here. Your prayer life is going to be more effective now. I'm telling you. You are going to pray with divine strategies. Heaven will be giving you a strategy of what to pray. Heaven will give you strategies of how to handle the situation. Strategies are coming from heaven because the Spirit of God supplies supernatural strategies. The spirit supply supernatural strategies. Whether it's for business, it's for ministry, it's for job. The spirit 
supply supernatural strategies. I depend on the Holy Ghost. I depend on the Holy Ghost. This is why Romans chapter 8, 14 said, Romans chapter 8, verse 14, it said, as many that are led by the Spirit, is by the Spirit. By the Spirit, you're led into wealth. By the Spirit, you're led into the business that will bring the billion flow. By the Spirit, you're led into an idea that will change everything. By the Spirit, you're led into strategy. There are supernatural strategies. By the Spirit, you're led into those strategy. You look at the place, oh, this land is a barren land. Everything is barren here. No, you need a strategy from the Spirit. <laughs> People can put their business at the center of the town and nobody's seen them. Location does not equal productivity. Mm. Wow. I said location does not equal productivity. A right location does not equal success because you can be at the right spot and nobody sees that business. So right now, we are depending on the Holy Ghost. We are led into things. By the Spirit of God, we are led into harvest. So I'd like us to pray right now and say, sweet Holy Spirit, I want you to be the governor general of my life. I want it to show me. I want it to reveal. I want it to cause me to understand things. There are things my brain can understand because my brain was not wired to understand those things. Holy Ghost caused my spirit to understand things, caused my spirit to understand things, caused my spirit to understand things. Cause my spirit to understand things. Run, Cause my spirit to understand things. Cause my spirit. I have understanding. I have understanding. Understanding about this situation. I have understanding. Oh God, I have interpretation. I have interpretation. I have understanding. I have interpretation. I have understanding. I have understanding. I have interpretation. I have understanding. I have interpretation. I have understanding. I have interpretation of things. I know what to do. There are prayers to pray when the Spirit begins to reveal some prayer. The Spirit begins to reveal some prayer. The Spirit begins to reveal what to pray. The Spirit begins to show you scriptures to stand on. By the Spirit, I receive counsel. I, I receive understanding. I, I receive inspiration. I receive revelation. I receive insight by the Spirit of God. I receive supernatural strategy. Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm hearing the voice of God. I, I understand the voice of God. That should be your confession. I am hearing the voice of God. I understand the voice of God. I am hearing the voice of God. I understand the voice of God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lamb of God. I understand the voice of God. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Today you have received something that will can carry for the next 60 years of your life. I'm telling you, what you have received today, you'll be able to know. You'll be able to say, Holy Spirit, I don't see this picture clear, but I know you can, you can make it clear to me, Holy Ghost. You can make these pictures clear. Bring them together. You know, 
two days ago, I asked my wife a question. I said, did you have a dream? Sometimes I ask that you have a dream. And she replied was, I am bringing them together. That's when the, the dreams came in different. And he said, I'm gathering them together. You know, I, I, I didn't think about that. Of things coming together. I'm gathering them together. You know, sometimes God is showing you this, he's showing you that they need to come together. It is by the spirit they come together. The way those dry bones came together, it was by the spirit they came together. There are things God has been showing you. You're going to pray in this season. May they come together. May they come together. May the picture be made perfect before you. Wow. This, this, this is the word from God. May the picture be made perfect. You know, sometimes he said, he said, they have been attacking me. They have been gossiping me. They have scandaled my name. That is your place of assignment. Sometimes your place of assignment is a place where you receive the worst of abuse. And all the abuse is coming and accusation as you can walk away from your destiny. That's what Satan wants to do. And people sometimes don't understand this. A, a place where you have faced your, your, your major warfare may be your place of destiny. But sometimes Satan make you believe that's not a place. And this is why when I see people giving up, they don't understand the spiritual strategy and deception the enemy is trying to use to, to dislodge them. From your place of inheritance, this is what the devil likes to do, is to accuse you until you give up. It's to accuse you, accuse you, accuse you, accuse you until you say, okay, I'm okay, I quit. You, won't got, you guys won't see me anymore. I'm gone. And then the enemy smile. <laughs> I really got her. <laughs> because your place of assignment is also a place of battle. <laughs> your place of assignment is also a place of battle but you don't give up on your assignment because of how fierce the battle is wow that's a word for someone thank you Holy Spirit your place of assignment is also a place the, the battle begins to rage but when the battle begins to rage you don't just have to give up and say well I don't think they like me. No. No. When you're in the will of God, most people won't like you. Stop waiting for like. Get out of that thinking. They don't even like me. They don't even like me. And so what? You're doing the will of God. Satan will ensure that they don't like you. And then if you're not careful, rejection and low self-esteem will affect the vision. They don't like me. They don't like me. Get out from that mentality. The neighborhood where our church is located, there are so many people in that neighborhood that don't like our church. They criticize us. They say a matter of things. But that doesn't stop me from doing ministry. <laughs> Who cares whether you like me or not? I'm here on a mission. I've made up my mind to serve God. I don't care your opinions. Your opinion is to yourself. My assignment is my focus. Get out of this mentality. They don't like me. They don't like me. They don't like me. Nobody likes me. No, hey, stop that. You don't need that crap. Get out from that. Nobody likes you. Love yourself. Pursue your assignment. Pursue your vision. Pursue what God has called you to do. Be strong. God told Joshua, be strong and be very courageous. Imagine Joshua saying, God didn't like me. God didn't like me. God didn't like me. Shut up your mouth, Joshua. Joshua, be strong and be very courageous. <laughs> that was what God said to Joshua. Joshua, be strong and be very courageous. Be strong. That was what, you know, God doesn't want Joshua to come with those baby attitudes. They don't like me. No one loves me here. No one wants to see me. No one, no one cares about me. Hey, go. Because when you're doing the will of God, Satan will ensure that some people will be mad at you. Some people will be angry at you. Some people will accuse you. All of those things happening is one mission to just root you out. And once they root you out, the storm stops. 
<laughs> so then you have to now be wise. I've solved someone's problem right now. I've just given you a solution. So be more tough. <laughs> be more tough. Come on, somebody got an answer this morning. Be more tough. Be more courageous. See, raise your head. Come on. I said, raise your shoulder. Raise your head and stand. And say, hey, I'm going to fix this. I don't care what you think. Be more tough. Don't chicken out. Lion in. <laughs> <laughs> I said, don't chicken out, lie on it. That should be a book for somebody. Don't chicken out, lie on it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are not chicken out. Come on. We are not chicken out. No way, no way, no way, no way. We are lion in it. <laughs> you know, lion, they, they, they have confidence. They take control. You see, elephant is bigger than lion, but there is this boldness about lion. When, whenever the lion look at elephant, he's seen lunch. As lion looks at the elephant, oh my God, my lunch is ready. I need to go for this lunch. I need to go for this lunch. How did the lion get to that point? Because it is in him. Don't chicken out, lion in. Don't chicken out from business, lion in. Pursue the vision. Take your time and read Joshua chapter one verse from Joshua chapter one from verse three to nine. Read it today. Meditate on all the lines. All the places you see the strong and courageous highlights them. Joshua chapter 1 from verse 3 to 9. All the places you saw be courageous, be strong, and highlight them. He said to Joshua, no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. It's time to lie on it. Don't chicken out. Lie on it. Hallelujah. Wow, I wish I could do more, but our time is up. Let's go. We're coming back tomorrow. Hallelujah. And I know some people say, I was working on Gino, but let's come back tomorrow. Let's come back tomorrow. Invite someone to, don't forget this statement. If you forget everything I said, don't forget this. Don't chicken out, lie on it. Don't forget it. Don't forget it. Don't chicken out from your kingdom responsibility, lie on it. Don't chicken out from your assignment. Lie on it. Because your adversary, the devil, wants you to chicken out. But you, you lie on it. You know, the Bible said the enemy is going about like a roaring lion. Looking for whom to be for. He didn't say looking for everybody. He says looking for whom. He didn't say it's looking for everybody. Because there are people, if he looks for them, when they look for him, you get lost. There are people Satan don't look for <laughs> because they're already in trouble. Once they touch them, one they will start damaging everything. So the, the devil is wise about that matter. I said, Leave me alone, leave me alone. Because once you touch them, they'll start damaging things, damaging everything. <laughs> so you're lining in in this matter. Father, we thank you this morning. <laughs> we'll give you praise that your word came to us. Well, thank you because you spoke to us. Well, thank you for everyone watching this broadcast around the world. Well, thank you because your word will continue to reach the nations. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, amen. If you're watching this broadcast today, you can say this after me if you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. You can continue to watch our broadcast by subscribing to our YouTube channel. It's Red Man Teachings on YouTube. And also you can watch me on finishworktv.com. I want to encourage you today to partner with this ministry. When you partner with us, we continue to take this message to more people around the world. You can partner with us by going to finishworktv.com and slash giving and give as the Spirit of God will lead you. Thank you for being part of this broadcast. Until I come your way soon. Don't ever forget this. Don't chicken out. Lie on in. <laughs>